Welcome to the seventh annual Mr. Olympia Prediction Show. I thought it'd be good to get both the stars of the past and the future to give their thoughts on the upcoming show. We are joined by brand new pro Mike Van Roats. Aside from Jay Cutler, the man with the most magazine covers, Jimmy Mentis. New Jersey's Hello. own and the man behind I Prevail Supplements, Jason Arntz. And preparing for his New York pro debut, Kennedy Anyanwu. Gents, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank now, next time I want to record earlier because that, that that could be like Patreon stuff that we were talking about behind the walls here. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if anybody could be a bug on a wall right now, right? That was gold. <laughs> so, guys, let's 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 just start fresh off here. Can we all agree that this is a two pony race here, or is there anybody else that's that's kind of vying for for one and two slots? Does anybody right, disagree? Let me, let me throw a monkey wrench in here. <laughs> well, what what are the who are the two ponies? How, how do you know? Yeah, I think Samson's going to take a shot at this, dude. <laughs> All right. So, 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 Jason, hold on to that. Let me throw a little monkey wrench in here. I. Th what happens if Andrew comes in, dialed in, because Chris Aceto and Chris ain't playing this year. They're going all out. Okay? Let's just say that Andrew is like spot on, ready, more than ready, more than we expected. Right. Do you place him first, second, or third? Fourth. I, th I think, yeah, I, I think, I think his, I think Andrew right now, the problem with Andrew is front, front shots, Andrew's number one. He's got the best ab and thigh. He's mm -hmm. probably got the best front double, the best front lat spread. The problem is when you turn him to the side or from the back. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of other bodybuilders on that stage that just have a lot more meat when it comes to those shots. So that pulls him down overall in placings. Right. Uh, so, so I think Andrew, to me, I have him as third. I think, and I'm going on. I'm going out on a limp here, but I think Andrew. This is the year Andrew is probably going to supersede Samson. I think those two are the heirs apparent, but I think that this is the year that Andrew is probably going to go on top of Samson, in my opinion. Do Do we all agree that Samson has the best lines on stage? Yeah. Um, lines. I, his lines. I still um, say Andrew. I right. still give it to Andrew. Honestly. If we so, if we so, talk about silhouette, right? Like you take you take a you shine a light on him and you look at the silhouette against the right. background. Samson and Andrew are the ones, right? Like they're the silhouette guys. Um, and then it comes down to to a choice of do you like the really, really sweepy quads? Do you like the slightly blockier quads, but the crazy pop? Um, I I think they're like a neck and neck comparison, in my opinion. Right. It just kind of comes down to what you like body part choice wise. Jason, what were you going to say now? So I, I think uh, if Andrew was at his all-time best, um, if he hits it perfectly, he'll be in fourth place. I, I think when you see – what you have to remember is Andrew still lacks the, the size to stand next to a Derek, a Hottie, or a Samson, right? Right. Against these other guys that he's beaten, that he's beaten, that he looks like he looks like. Well, this is gonna, this is gonna be a run for the Olympia. He's gonna make that run. But there are certain levels of guys at the Olympia, and I've I've competed there four years, and you see, you, you see, the top five, top six guys, and then you see the second group, right? Yeah. And not that he's a second tier bodybuilder by by no means, but take a guy like Tony Freeman. Remember Tony Freeman? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 See Tony by himself. You see him in some of these smaller shows. Holy shit, dude! This guy's a top three at the Olympia. But then you put him next to the top guys, and it's just a different story. It's a different look. I'm not saying Andrew can't be there down the road, but he has longer limbs. He's a taller guy. He still has areas that need to develop. He needs to fill out. Yeah, like you know, yeah. like you're, you're talking those top three guys. Those muscle bellies run from the wrist right. to the mid right. forearm, where he has. He has this much of bone right. showing, and then it's a pop. Right. right. And the same thing in his legs, and same thing in his lats. Right. Um, so that there, he's going to get washed out a little bit, and he's got to really 
you know, if Nick Walker and, you know, Nick's going to be in shape, it'll be close for either of them fighting it out for fourth place. So, yeah, so, and- we, so we know that we know, do we all agree that we know that Hani's bringing Derek and Hadi in tight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are we all confident enough that Sam's is going to come in by himself? So I, I've seen some recent pictures of Samson. Well, and, uh, we'll, fi- we'll find out this weekend. I mean, he's right. he's competing, right? He's competing right. this weekend. So well, I think he? I think that yeah, he's competing in the, the, the uh, France, France. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he jumped in last yesterday, minute. Jason. What's that? Just announced yesterday or today. Yeah, he's doing kind of a tune-up show before the Olympia. So, you guys think that's a, a, you guys think that's a, a good tune-up move? show, or is he trying to requalify yeah. for next year because he knows he might not make the top three? No, I think it's a tune-up show because he still man. has yet to really hit his peak. So yeah. I do think it's a good idea right. for him because it'll only make I agree. better. Um, he's not going to worry about losing size. You know, it, it's not one of those Jason, let, where, where he's burnt out. And, you know, I, I think it'll be a good thing for him. Jason, right. let me ask you this from a – you're the only one to step, you know, at the Olympia level here. Do you think there is, you know, as you're getting closer to this show – do you think there is that chance? One, like the look, right? Like you don't want the judge, the judges kind of getting used to that look before you even hit the Olympia stage, right? Like, like almost like a desensitization before you get there. So, like when Samson shows up to the Olympia, everyone is already gonna know what he looks like. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Do you think that hurts him like down uh, the line on, on an actual stage? No, no, I think. I, I think he'll have more of a wow factor because he's going to smoke these guys yeah. at this show, you know? So everybody's going to be looking forward to, hey, look at this guy who just dominated this stage. Let's see him next to Derek. Let's see him next to Hottie. Let's see him next to Andrew. Let's see him next to Nick. Let's see him against these top guys. I think it'll give him a push because now he's got everybody looking at him. Wow, hey, he, he dialed it in perfectly. Or, hey, if he could fine-tune it a little more. I mean, Jimmy, in our, our, our days – Kevin, those guys, when they were working their way up through the ranks, dude, they competed at every fucking show every weekend. Like, they were fighting for prize money. We weren't making a lot of money back then. So, you know, the only way to make money is to win these smaller shows, and it's ten grand at best, you know, if, if they were lucky, you know. So um, I don't know if anybody really got, got overseen, you know. Um, of course, there's guys that once they hit that mark, you see them once a year, you can't wait to see them. Um, but I think Andrew is really – in his, I'm sorry, Samson is really in his stride right now where I do not think the judges will be desensitized. But besides, you know, the judges in France are going to be completely different from the judge at the Olympia. They, they cycle yeah. these judges. You, you know, I, 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 I was on another podcast and I, I agree. I think it's, a, this is, I said it then, I, I, I hold what I said before. I think this is a good move for Samson, okay? He doesn't have Milos, so so I don't even think he has a coach, to be honest with you. So well, basically, his wife, supposedly. Well, so basically, yeah. Okay. Well, no offense, but you're you're basically doing what Milos gave you the previous year, and you're trying to feel things out, right? So he's riding, not knowing he doesn't have anybody to to. So I think this is a test. You know, what foods do I need? How much do I need to eat? What this that? I think it's smart of him to do the show. Right. You know, and, and if he requalifies, then he requalifies. And if he grabs 15, 20 grand, he grabs the 15, 20 grand. You know, it's not like it's not like it's going to be harder on a system. You're in you're in the deep end already. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's all about carbs and sodium and water at this point. Yeah. So, you know, he'll he'll be able to fine tune in and see, you know, well, you know what, that did that really didn't work. Let's try this one. Because I don't know if it's a smart idea in the situation he is now to show up at the Olympia and start throwing shit up against the wall to see what sticks. Yeah. From a, from a peaking perspective, it makes sense from a media perspective. It's a two ended gun. (laughs) So I I put it like, I, I put it like this, for example, right? Like Nick Walker is a prime example of who was on the opposite end of this gun this year. Yeah. Prior to the New York pro, People were talking about Nick Walker winning the Olympia. He shows up at the New York, probably not his best compared to previous showings. He was very close with Martin. Yeah. I pers- I was there. I personally thought Martin should have won. <clears throat> wow. But um, 
Really? Yeah, I was I was there. Like I I thought Martin should have won that show, but um yeah, it wasn't his best. It was close, and now people don't even put him in the conversation for right. top three or four. So it's like there's also that aspect of it too that mentally it's got to affect. As I mean, as these people say, oh, it doesn't affect me. You know, it's me versus me. Come on, we all know it affects you. Like like we've all been through that. Through yeah. that. We we so like, we we yeah. Get. I'm sorry. So I was going to say, like, if I hope Samson, I hope they nail the peak there, because if they don't, I feel like that could negatively impact him going into the Olympia. Essentially, his stock will go down, even if he wins the show. But it's a lesser showing than his previous Arnold looks of earlier this year. It right. will affect his momentum going into the Olympia. That's that's where I worry for him. Well, let, let's put it this way. From the video I saw yesterday or the day before yesterday, I believe is in the same condition as he was when he won the Arnold. Unless, unless there's something else that, that he's not showing. Jimmy, don't, you know? those videos, man, don't, don't go by those videos, man. It's okay. Okay. You got, you got the perfect lighting. He's got some filters on there. <laughs> I need them. I need them. <laughs> you know? So, but, but, it, but it's, it's what, what, what Jason said. It's like, you know, he's, he's, He's he's giving a a, a a little run to see how is how is this going to pan out, you know. And I think it's smart. I think it's smart of him to do that. Yeah, I think it's a good move for him. Yeah. Um, he's still learning his way. Uh, he needs to really fine tune those glutes a little bit. And sometimes hitting it a couple times, a few weeks apart, really gets your body to yeah. You know, and, and one thing, you know, we've all competed. We know the more we compete, the better we get. You absolutely, know, like absolutely. Yeah. When, when you haven't been ripped before, you know, like when you've never been in onion skin shape before, you, you don't get there over. There's some guys genetically that could do with their first show. You know, don't get me wrong. There are. Those are yeah. those are few and far between. Right. But there's guys that systematically their body's going to hold on to a little bit of fat for survival. To, hey, you know what? I've done this before. It's OK. Now we could release. Our, cort our cortisol levels could drop a little bit. We could get rid of that little excess water. You know, we know we're going to survive. And they've managed to get better. Look at Jay Cutler. When Jay Cutler first competed as a pro, dude, he had baby skin. You know, three, four, five shows later, he's top two in the Olympia. You know, right. it was a yeah. – so with Sam Samson, I think this is a good move for him. Um, I'm not concerned. Kenny, I know you said you were concerned. I will sleep good tonight. And tomorrow night, knowing that, <laughs> but that he's going to be fine, and you know, um, and maybe getting away from Milos. All due respect to Milos, is maybe maybe that was the the best thing for him. And whether his wife is coaching him now or not, who knows? But right. she seems to be an honest eye, you know, yeah. giving him because, dude, he's gotten better. Yeah, he's yeah. Got, he's got. You can't you can't argue with results, right? Yeah. So if he's progressively gotten better. These this next show for him going into the Olympia, I we can safely assume that uh, it's it's a move in, in a positive direction. The only thing that worries me, right? If I had something to negative to say about Samson is he don't look his weight, right? And he's out muscling these guys or he's outweighing these guys 40 pounds, right? And you don't see it. Is that Jason? Is that from like the density? Is that from the quality? Well, so Jim, Jim, this is. I was going to mention this before when we we weren't when we weren't taping. Guys in the past, like guys like Kevin and Ron, you know, guys are outweighing them nowadays, but they don't look as big as they <laughs> used to. And I think Samson is a victim of that. All like Samson, right. dude, yeah. he's got some dense muscle. It's right. dense quality, and it looks like it's hard earned muscle, as opposed to just enhanced muscle. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. But there, there is a difference, um, and I think that's one of the best qualities that Samson has is that he looks like he's got earned muscle, quality right. muscle. Yeah. He's, he looks, he looks like uh, he's, he looks like he's almost like a '90s bodybuilder with the size of like yeah. a modern yeah. day, which yeah. is what makes him look very. I, you, yeah, I, got, very a, very I got a question. I got a question for you guys. What if we see Samson and his knocks always been right? He's he's not as hard as he should be from the back. And the, the judges have told him that how many years in a row now, right? What if we see Samson show up and it's the same Samson from the back? How far does he slip out of the top 
three, five? Do we see multiple the people jump at, the at, at the Olympia, right? Like think, what if we see I mean, a very if similar the, if, the judges, I think we, if the judges judge that day, he shouldn't slip at all compared to what he looked last year. They should be judging that day. I, I think with I think with Samson, even with the back non-bearing, we already know one and two are are where they are. But right. I think with him, it's more of a conditioning versus just the muscle of you know lacking muscle. Like for them, let's be honest, even without a back, if Samson was shredded, peeled, they would have given him the Olympia. They're basically saying, dude, you are Mr. Olympia. We just right. need you to come in in the condition that represents what that crown looks like and right. we will give it to you that that's essentially what if, they've been saying if, for if, years if, you if, know if, if, yeah. if he doesn't bring that do you think he still holds the same general position or do you think I, so? no i think i think he slips personally i, I think who, i think he'll be a top go. three guy yeah. yeah hold on a second let me let me explain something here when you go when you go to those big guys right when you're over that 260 270 mark I've seen two different types of physiques, okay? Obviously, I was one of them. But I also made the mistake of not listening to what how I responded. And I think this is a Samson, um, Andrew, A.B., okay? If Samson comes in not as full, he looks ripped. He doesn't look flat, Okay? If Andrew comes in a little depleted, he's gone. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. you see what I'm saying? So yeah. as as a, if I was if I was coaching if I was coaching Samson, I would bring him in a little less fuller. Yeah, I think that's what they did for the Arnold UK. Yeah, if you I'll bring a little less fuller. Need, yeah, and and Andrew, I would just load him up because he's got those round muscle bellies that if you don't you, you don't fill him up. He's just gonna look small and flat and and, and, and just a mess. Well, as big yeah. as he looks, he'll look stringy next to those guys if he's not stringy. Full. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And that's and that's where that's where you know Jason comes in and says that's where the quality, right, the dense, mm -hmm. the density. That's where it comes in because when you have that quality muscle, when you have those lines, you need to come in a little less full. Yeah. Right. Because because listen, nobody knows how full you can be. OK, my whole career, I'm trying to be as full as I can. I didn't even know if I was the fullest. You don't know that. Right. So you're always testing. So but I realized at some point that once I, I, I found a, a spot where I'm comfortable with, I was OK not being as full because I was more ripped. And when you're on that stage, the Olympia stage, it's all about condition. Right, yeah. it doesn't matter. I, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy, the, only, the only caveat I'll tell you here is I think Samson found that limit of how full because Arnold 23 finals. If you saw that man, that guy was blasting full. I remember seeing that footage, I was watching it uh, like on my TV. And I was like, Listen, any more carves that this guy gets, he's gonna pop. Like, right. he was, I was, blasting I was full. I was Arnold there. 23, right? Yeah, I was there. <laughs> I was there. I was third row. I also did the wrap up with RX Muscle. Yeah. He was full. Yeah, but that final was crazy. But he was on TV. Think about it. It's going to, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. He was yeah. full, but he was nowhere near the condition he was in the For morning sure. in the prejudging. For sure. You see what For I'm sure. saying? So, yeah. so I prefer him coming in ripped and leaving some room because yeah. if you come in full and, and that foot, that, that pump is not sitting well, you're losing it after that first round of comparisons. So Jimmy, where do you put him then? Where what is your choice for Samson? I have him third. Okay. And Kennedy, you third, third also? I'm sorry. I have him. I, I I have I'm going on a whim here. I think Andrew is ex exceedingly motivated this year. And I'm seeing his camp. The the thing with Samson and Andrew, the difference is I know we're saying it, Samson is a what if because of his camp. There have been changes, right? And at that level, right, right. It's consistency stability in, in your camp and the variables is number one. So Samson is more of a, what if Andrew is more of a definite to me in terms of what they're both bringing. And I think, I think this year, Andrew is going to be third and Samson is going to be fourth. Yeah. That, that could be possibly like, like this Olympia, Sean, like usually I'm a betting man. I, yeah. I would not be betting this Olympia. Yeah. yeah okay.
So, Jason, I'm hearing I'm hearing Samson third for you, if I'm understanding, or maybe I'm wrong. I think I think Samson. It's it's look, and and I can't I can't undermine Derek because Derek's just a freak, you know. And uh, um, Hottie is coming to reclaim his title, um, and Hottie has that sharpness. Hottie has that muscle maturity. Hottie has that density. And Hottie has it year after year after year. That's a that's a, a constant. That's the one control is you know how Hottie's going to look. Um, it's hard to really pick up make a prediction because if Derek's slightly off, Hottie could edge him out, right? Um, but if if Derek is perfectly on, I can see Derek winning this again. Um, but if Samson hits his peak, he could be second and Hottie could be third. It, it could be you know. It's hard to say because you have three guys, and it's it all depends how they all show up, you know. Well, you I also got to put in there. The but if they all show up perfectly, if they all show up perfectly, um, I think I still got to go with Derek and maybe Samson second and Hottie third. I, I like um, how Jason says if they all show up perfectly, he knows damn well no one ever shows happening. up perfectly. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> no. Never gonna happen. Never. No. No. <laughs> no, you know, Mike. What, yeah. what did you? What did you have? Uh, uh, Samson at? Yeah, it's a tough one. I go back and forth. Um, I think at this point, I do have Andrew leapfrogging him into that third spot, um, and and Nick and and Samson fighting for fourth. Honestly, wow. wow okay. Yeah. I uh, yeah. you know, I Chris seems very excited about, <laughs> you know, Andrew's look this year, you know, he was going into his past shows. Um, Chris lives up here in Lewiston and, you know, sometimes I see him at the gym and he was very excited about Andrew's trajectory this year. And um, what I saw in Texas, if that look gets improved on at all. Yeah. I think, I think that's really tough to beat, and I think there's only two guys that can beat it at this point. And I just, I just found out too. Uh, Dave just, just kind of gave out the reason why last year. Because if you notice, Andrew at the Olympia last year, he did not look like himself. He didn't look like he wanted to be there. He did not look like he was, you know, he was prepped. As, like he didn't look like he prepped. He gave it a hundred percent. And I think Dave, Dave Palumbo just said recently, I forget what show, which one of RX Muscle, that Andrew had actually gone to Nigeria for a couple of months yeah. during the Olympia prep. Yeah. So he didn't really have a, a complete prep that we were expecting. And now we see that he's he's been in, in California with, with Psycho Lewis. So yeah. I just think that Andrew this year, he just seemed very motivated. And listen, out of those top five, Andrew is the youngest when it comes to bodybuilding years. He's only been doing this for maybe what this is what his fourth year as a pro. Is it even four yeah, years? He turned pro in what 21? 21, yeah. 21. Yeah, that's when he turned pro. So I think he's gonna keep climbing. I think he's gonna be third this year. And if he continues to improve, I, I think he's gonna be he's gonna be one or two in a year or two from now, in my in my honest opinion. I I, I, I for me personally, if we're talking about heir apparent, I personally think it's Andrew. Just based on the trajectory that that this guy has just been going on so far, and you're winning. Not this year, but the heir oh. apparent in terms of the guy that's going to be a dominant Mister Olympia. I don't think we're we're going to have that right now, but I think he's going to be that dominant Mister Olympia champion in the next couple of years to come. The 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 the, the thing that that kind of you know frustrates me is there's only four guys. Hasn't it always been that way, though? No, <laughs> no, no. I mean, way. four guys for for top for for uh, Mr. Olympia, like the top let, let four, me, four, let me five. Tell you, it was a battle to get in the top ten. Oh, yeah, but there's always been this, overall four. Really yeah, but there's always been, but Jimmy, Jimmy. There's always been two. There's always two. been two tiers. Yeah, there's always you been know, two Kenny, tiers. I know what you're. I know what you're saying. saying. There's been yeah, Lee Haney, Dorian, Ronnie, Phil, yeah. you know Jay, yeah. and you know right. It's, there's mostly four guys that are fighting, you know, close to the title, and and that's where I think we were right. talking about off air. But there's there's first tier and second tier, right? From the guys fighting to get into the top five, and then the guys that are the top five fighting for the title, right? That's kind of the hierarchy of how it goes. Right, 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 right. I don't know. I just to me, I 
I, I expect more from, from the guys today. I expect more. I, I expect that top 10 to be freaking amazing. You know, well, I, I think the top 10 is, is, I mean, granted, right. I wasn't around in the nineties. I wasn't there, but as far as the last man, what 10, 15 years of bodybuilding, this top, the top 10 is, I mean, in Phil's right. Like we, we look back when Phil was winning his titles, you had five guys and then you had below that a bunch of guys that weren't going to ever push up into the fifth spot. Right. right. Now we have a top 10 that everybody's competitive and can, I couldn't tell you what the top 10 is going to be because 10 could be at, you know, six and eight could be at five. You know, I, I do think it's a very, very competitive lineup. I mean, I mean, Jimmy, we're talking about, we're talking about a top 10 where, a former Mr. Olympia is in this lineup, and we don't even think he's going to be in the top five. That's how competitive this is. Yeah, but, you know? but Brandon's been, you know, Brandon's just, just, you know, he's. But but he's you look at but, but, but here's the thing. But, but, Jim, but Jimmy outside, Brandon is from Brandon is from two eras. That's the right. difference, right? When when Dexter was was competing, Dexter competed across all the eras. Dexter maintained top six for majority of his time competing till towards the end, right? Um. And you look at now just a competitive landscape. I mean, Rafael Brandel, this guy can win any pro show typically right. during the year. And right now he's probably maybe number 10, you know, yeah. from that eight to 10. So it's very competitive. I just, I think that it's, it's more of when people say that, like sometimes it's like, if you really start to really look at the, the physiques and look at the guys that are competing, that are actually fighting for this thing. Right. These guys are good, man. Like, all right. So what do you, so what do you have good. Hunter? <laughs> I have Hunter in like eighth. Are you yeah. disappointed? Are you disappointed, Hunter? I am. I am. I mean, I am. Well, three years ago, he was tight. He was four fifth, right? Three he, years ago, he looked. He looked his best at the Tampa Pro when he won it. What happened after that? But but Jimmy, isn't that isn't that a testament to what we're saying here about how competitive no, well, it is? That's, well, that's what no, I'm saying because no. because you got you got you got the, you got no. I agree with you. I agree. I kind of yeah. agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I like Jimmy, man. It's our first date, and I gotta say, I am such a fan. You know, <laughs> the, the the thing the thing is, is like, you know, when we said top ten back then, okay. You took those. You took those on the road. Those okay. Obviously, sometimes the winner of the Olympia will go on the second show on the Grand Prix. Remember those Grand Prix, Jason? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they. I mean, you got wiped out, right? It was just you were just a mess uh, when you're all done. But those grand those Grand Prix after the show, right? When when that then that second tier, you want to call it second tier, went out on the road. That's not the same second tier that we have here. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's like we're trying to, we're trying to have these make these guys into amazing bodybuilders, and they're not there yet. Can it's you, not the clarify? same. The, the the second, first of all, the first tier is not the first tier. We know that. I can see that. Okay, the quality is not there. They still got ten more pounds to lose. Everybody on that Olympia stage and Arnold stage has ten more pounds to lose. I say so it, hmm. and everybody else that everybody else that that understands getting ripped and getting ready for a show. Now, let me. I'm going to back this up with a little. We see. I see it that they need ten more pounds to lose. Now, that not that might not be their fault, and I'll tell you why. When when we were coming in shredded with death face, okay, we were also dropping backstage because we were so dried out okay they kind of put a halt to that and they start rewarding the guys they start saying hey you don't need to come in that much that deep but you know what at least be hard kind of ripped and full and they start rewarding that and that's what took off then you see all these guys coming in are you telling me you telling me that samson couldn't lose, couldn't drop another 10 pounds? Sure. I think, so. we could, I think so he could drop another 10 pounds, but would he look? So hold on, hold on. It's two things. It's two things here. So one, I think using the Olympia as the metric for conditioning in the IFBB today is just the wrong way to go, in my opinion. Number one, what would you the, use? Reason why, 
the reason why, hold on, the reason why is just because of the way that show, the current God, I hope my career doesn't get killed for this. But the way the, the way the show right now, these guys are going on at like 11 p.m., 12 p.m. at night. I get that. Look That's at fine. look at yeah, look at the look at the current shows, the, the state shows that happen throughout the year. Most of these guys that have won shows this year have been in very, very good condition, right? Like if you Thank look you. across the board, right? Most of these guys have been peeled, but when they get to the Olympia. A lot of times we don't see that conditioning reflect. I don't think it's a symptom of these guys not prepping. They're prepping for the best show of their lives. Right. Of course you're giving it their all. It's just the way the show is set up right now. So wait, that's on, typically because because in my opinion, if if no, I agree. one person if, if 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 one person is if one person comes in or two or three people come in shape and everyone's out of shape, you can maybe make that argument. Right. When everyone is out of shape. It is not the competitors at that point. Something is right going on. When, when they're sitting well, backstage for three, four hours. That's good. Yeah, Jason, get in here. So if, if, if I may, I have two sure two points, two points to make. Right. <laughs> um, and I've been there four times, and and mm -hmm. and what I can say is the stress of being at the Olympia first and foremost, added to the stress of being on the Olympia stage is a different fucking animal right. than any other show in the world. So you're talking guys that, you know, they're missing their peak because they're not, they're, they're, you, there's no way, unless you've done it time and time again, there's no way to combat that adrenaline, the anxiety, the cortisol, the, the release you get. Plus these guys are making appearances all day at the Olympia. It's not like you go to a local show and you yeah. show up at your judging and then you show up a couple hours late. These guys are worked around the clock. All the pressure is on. Every eye in the industry is looking at them. And it's the biggest title in the world with the biggest prize money in the world. So it's a different animal entirely when it comes to the stress level of being there. Okay. Um, the, the second part, the fuck was my second part? <laughs> Shit, okay. <laughs> what I believe my second part was um, somebody like like a, like a Hunter Labrada, right? We, we were talking about before. Total disappointment in Hunter. This guy has all the quality to be one of those top guys, and he just cannot hit his, hit his peak. He's one of those guys that needs to compete show after show and really learn his body, and he's just not doing it. But from what I can see, is when you talked about the quality of physiques and they're being rewarded for, for not sucking down so much. I don't know if that's it because for maybe not today, but for the past four or five years coming into now, these guys weren't looking as good. And there was all the, the talk right. about these right. guys aren't as good as the guys in the past. Yeah. And it seemed like the work ethic just was not there anymore. Hey, I'm not going to suck down all the way because you know why? I don't have to. Right. Because the other guys aren't. It's not like they're rewarding you for showing up with less. They're rewarding the best they got. And the best they got aren't peaking right. They're basically so rewarding if, who doesn't look that bad. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody shows up in that peak prime condition, they're not going to say, hey, fuck you, dude. You're setting a standard and making it harder for the other guys. No, dude, you're going to get that extra prize money. You're going to get that place. So, so I would so, pin that down on, on guys – they don't want to be hungry. They so don't let, want to go ask, that extra mile. J Jason and Jason and Jimmy, let me ask you guys this, this question. And, and I, Sean, I like the way you set this up with you know, you guys, you guys from your era and, and our era, essentially, because I'm You're I'm getting things like world. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying you guys are giving real world experience, like you were there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like now, this is our era, and I, I follow yeah. it very closely. So, for example, are you telling me that Hadi is not? Hadi is one of the most conditioned guys of the IFBB today. Are you telling me that Hadi is not coming in condition? Absolutely not. What I am saying is Hadi is that one guy. But hold on. To depend on. He's the he's the control I said before. But hold he's on. in peak condition every Olympia. He's the one guy that goes at it. Hold on, Jimmy. Hold on. I, I would say I would say that I'm gonna Samson, that's you, 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 you can't you can't put you can't base it on a Samson or an Andrew, in my opinion. Those two guys, they're rewarded because they have exceptional symmetry and size and all that. The rest of the, I feel like they're not judged the same way everyone else is. Nick Walker, you telling me Nick Walker doesn't come in condition? 
No, I mean, I'm he's not, no, not saying that at he all. doesn't. Well, no, so no, let, no, let, no, me, no, let no. me let me hop in here real fast. Hadi, he's yeah. from Iran. He wants his ass out of there. Okay, he's a king man. He's living like a king over there. He, I don't know about that. He's a king now. He's they got they got a statue in his name. Right. You know, twenty right. foot statue. He, I don't know. He man. is a king now, right? And he busted his ass to become the king over there, right? Very true. So he had no other way. Yeah, he basically had no other way. Okay, yeah. so when we trained back then, we did two of these. AM PM workouts. Add your add your AM PM cardio. We went in the gym four times a day. Where do you see that now? Push pull legs? Give me a fucking break. I don't know if any pros are doing I, push pull legs. I gotta be honest with you. So I mean, I'm I'm friends with a lot of top pros. No one's doing push pull legs. But no, the two a day thing, the, the two a day thing. Hold, here, hold, hold on. The two a day thing. I agree. That was a style that you guys did in the 90s. And Today it's kind of like we were talking about earlier. There's more science today. But here's the thing: it's in today's, in today's How's that present. science so, working out for you guys? Right. So, so, so here's here's the thing so, too, though. You you guys don't let me talk. Like, can I can I can I finish my statement? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so so listen, you could do those two a days, right? Yeah. And you may not have to do as much cardio. Maybe you can eat more. But guess what? You're gonna like the tank is gonna run out a lot more. You're actually, mm -hmm. it's actually, mm -hmm. it's actually beneficial in my in my opinion. Like this, this, nope. is, and you can maybe we can ask Dave at some point if you want to. I think that would be great. But I don't think two a days. I don't think two a days in a contest prep situation. If you're doing two hardcore, hardcore training sessions weeks on end, you are gonna burn out, man. Like nope. like your body is gonna fry up. Nope. So so if I, I can. Case. Yeah. No, no. So it's all food. It's food. So the the difference is, and like you said, the science is different now, and, yeah. and not necessarily it's better in a sense, but I think people are relying more on the science, right. and that's why yeah. the physiques look different. When before you worked it off, when now it's well, now I'll take this, now I'll take that, now I'll use this substance, and that's why the physiques. Don't look the same. Yeah. Now, whether it's better or for worse, or you know, it, it is what it is. But back then, you had to diet it all off, or you had to train it all off, and it gave a different quality look to the physique. Now, of course, dude, there's guys like there's guys like Nick and there's guys like Hottie that dude, they're hungry. They're definitely hungry. But in, in terms of burning out the tank, dude, these guys these guys competed four, five, six, seven times a year. Nowadays, people are competing once or twice a year, and they're talking like they're burnt out, that they need more time to recover. That's so true. the science is not making these guys more durable. It's actually making them weaker and giving them more of a, just like Lee Haney said, they look squatty. They look squatty on stage. They look like they're holding more subcutaneous fluid. It looks like they have this bloat to them that people just didn't have. I got a know, question for you. I got a question yeah. for you guys based on that. So um, the peaking process, I think, from the 90s is very different from today. Like today, you have to come in full and conditioned. In the 90s, it was more of a conditioned look. You can sacrifice a little bit of fullness to come in in a more conditioned look. I feel like, but I'm telling you, I, I feel like, because listen, Hadi is a prime example of this. Hadi used to come in super conditioned, super ripped, sacrifice some fullness, never won. Never. So he was always third or fourth. The, the 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 one time he actually pushed for fullness was when he was actually rewarded. Right. So so like that's the combination that the league is kind of looking for right now, and I think that is why guys push towards that end. Like you have to have the fullness in the condition. Versus in the nineties, when I see when I see videos, and by the way, HD videos versus like. The, the VHS stuff VHS. makes you look better. The VHS makes you look better. I got to admit, you know, because it's not as clear. You see the lines and stuff in HD. Everything shows. Everything's clear. You but, know what I mean? So, yeah, so let's but that, go that's back just to what this. I've noticed. Yeah, let's go back to this. What's the common denominator for for getting ready for a show? Low, lower your body fat. Low body fat. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So there's no trick here. It's work. Yeah. Right. So what brings the fullness? Carbs. Carbs. There's no problem here. 
And so I, I don't know if anybody said, hey, I'm going to come in more ripped than this show. Right. Uh, I'm going to come in more. F- the, the, the reality is, is if, and, and, and this is a way people could downgrade it. Hey, if you're not as ripped, oh, I came in fuller. Bullshit. Bullshit. You just didn't get ripped. Right. The goal for everybody, dude, and, and Kennedy, you're getting ready for it right now. Mike, you just got done doing it. Jimmy and I have done it for years. Our goal is to be the most ripped guy on that stage. If you could come in full too, fucking cool, right? Cool. But if yeah. not, dude, you're going for those glutes. We're, we're all going for those glutes because we know the little bit of fullness goes right to our asses, right? Yeah. So yeah. so getting ripped is always everybody's priority. And and what I see recently is is not so much. They're coming in a little fuller because they're not willing to sacrifice. They're not willing to go that extra mile to really suck down and suffer and 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 give what it takes to 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 obtain that dryness, you know. Um, and and Hunter, like that's the thing with him also. It's a perfect example, is he just can't get rid of that last bit of fl- it's not like his hey Hunter, you gotta get bigger. He's fucking big enough, dude. He's one he's one of the top guys with size. Yeah. It's you gotta get ripped, and he will jump from whatever place he ends up here to further down to that finish line, you know. So so it's it's a matter of everybody's goal is to get ripped. And everybody, let me. I, I don't want to mock. I'm not mocking the athletes today. I think they all look amazing. But here's the thing: they could be even more amazing if they if they push themselves. Do you eat fish for six weeks, eight weeks? What do you do? You eat fish only? Fish? What do you eat? Yeah, I eat, I eat mostly white fish. Uh, oh, six, oh, yeah, oh. six to eight weeks for North Americans. I I was basically right. on white fish like throughout till right. the show. They, not a lot of guys do that anymore, man. Here, yeah. But here's the thing, right, Jimmy? Here's the thing. Hunter did that. Hunter literally did that for 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 this prep. I I watched his YouTube series. Ben, his coach, has talked about it. He well, was on, literally on, on a fish, yeah. a fish if diet. May, if, if I may, if I may, we know what we see, right? Mm. We don't know what they do in the dark hours of the night, right? <laughs> what, what do you apply here, Jason? Something <laughs> ain't fucking adding up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's de- definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm not something. wrong. Something yeah. ain't adding up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's either sneaking behind somebody's back and taking in something he's not supposed to, or because dude, who or or that plan isn't working. Fucking change it, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, nothing's set in stone. I mean, all the all the shows that I did and stuff like that, you know, and I kept I kept the log. I didn't do a training log, right? But I had a a, a, a diet log and I wanted to see what was what make sure what I was eating and all that. Not one time did I open last year's notebook and did the same thing. Not once. Yeah. Not once. Yeah. But I have to tell you, the years that I suffered, I mean suffered. Okay. I was in the best shape of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll wrap I'll wrap it up with this. But what I'm what I'm saying, I don't want to make it a you know '90s versus today's body. No, body. absolutely not. Yeah, but but it's like you know I, I think sometimes we don't give the current bodybuilding crop today the credit that they deserve because these guys, I'm telling you, like if you look at, I know, listen, nostalgia makes everything a lot seem a lot more like grander than it actually was right like i'm not knocking any any 90s pros i'm just saying as the years go by the legends of these guys become greater and greater when phil heath was originally competing people no one ever said phil heath was the second greatest bodybuilder ever people were saying what we're saying right now they were saying the same thing of that era with phil heath kai green all these guys like oh you're not coming in this 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 10 years later, Phil is the second greatest, if not the greatest after Ronnie, right? So that, that's what I'm trying to say. Because if you put, like, no offense to Milos, I love Milos. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of him. He's a legend. But Milos was a top 10 at the Olympia back then. Top 10 open today, Milos is undersized. I'm sorry. It, it's just the truth. Like, conditioning or not, he's not going to place top 10. He's undersized. So, so, so sometimes I just feel like we don't give the today's crop – the, the 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 credibility that they actually deserve because I, these I, guys do put in a lot of work. I I, you know? I, I kind of agree with you, but I want to I want to kind of justify or or make excuses for make an excuse for us. Okay. Yeah. I think I don't think we're personally me. I'm not I'm not like talking talking down to these guys. It's because I see so much potential. Okay. 
It's like I want to grab him and kick him in the ass. Let me let me ask you this. You, you see what I'm saying? It's not like it's it's like I mean Regan Grimes, right? Look at Regan Grimes. Look at look at even Hunter, right? At one point, does someone around him or some old school guy turns around and say, "Hey, listen, man, you got all this going on for yourself, but you know what? I believe it's what we talked about before. I believe they have another outlet of funds." The YouTube, the this, the that, the notoriety is not allowing them to dig deep to do what they need to do. There's, and I agree with you. There was four or five years ago, there was, we were dry. Yeah. We were, the bodybuilding scene was dry, okay? And I think that's where they created the the, the classic, classic and, yeah. and they kind of switched it up, right? So, but now there's, there's a, amazing athletes i just i'm frustrated because i see it and they get on stage and i'm like man he could have dropped another six pounds i i got i got two things uh, one you and jason should go into car sales or something together because y'all would have sold me a car at this point <laughs> yeah i i had an argument and i've pretty much tossed it out the window at this point <laughs> but, <laughs> secondly we, we seem to be putting a lot of emphasis on the athletes, like being better, right? But do you think the current judging has to be scrutinized to some degree, right? Because they are rewarding these guys, right? And if you're getting rewarded for what you're bringing, why bring better? Well, uh, you want me to answer that? They're yeah, rewarding, yeah. What they, what they're rewarding what they have in front of them. But don't you think that, man, I... I get, that's true, I get, but I get, you, I get your question, Mike. You know what I mean? But just right. like, it is, they gotta they gotta put somebody in the first. They gotta put somebody got in front. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we said, right? Hottie what and Derek, right? They, what they, they can they, do yeah. is they give an extra ten grand for the most ripped guy. There you go. Or they give it a, an extra prize of money. They do it at the Arnold, the most right. muscular think, award, right? I get. I just. I guess, I, guess just, I find it interesting that, like, like Ken said. Right, we we judge Samson and Andrew on shape, right? But then we judge Derek and Hadi on conditioning. And these, let's say, these guys are getting in the top four. Now we have apples and oranges, and we don't have we don't have consistency. So, so I think they judge over. I think they judge over everything. But yeah. Listen, if you have a guy, but now I think we're in an era where in the early two thousands mass size was the predominant factor in bodybuilding judging if you were if you were not if you're not a big guy forget about it you're not even going to be in the mix right yeah. size was the predominant factor in the 90s conditioning was a pr predominant factor now we're seeing that flow symmetry seems to be shape is what they're looking for the most and i think there's a reason for that right like we said four or five years ago yeah we were yeah. kind of straying away right, yeah. from what the bodybuilding look should look like. And Arnold came out and said, you know, I don't like the stomachs on stage and all this stuff. And that's when things started to, to make a shift. So I think that we they are judging in the right direction, in my opinion. Like the physiques that are winning, I think they should be the ones winning. Look at mm -hmm. Dubai Dubai Pro. Beirut Tabani won Dubai Pro. Was he For the sure. most conditioned guy? He was, he was close to the most conditioned, but he wasn't. But he was the best in terms of yeah. overall silhouette and shape. And I think that's what they're rewarding. So a guy like Samson may not be as conditioned as, I don't know, throw any name, John Jewett out there, right? Yeah. John Jewett's killing them in condition. But you put two of them together in a silhouette and you say, what should bodybuilding look like? You're always going right. to pick Samson. And that's yeah. what they're rewarding right now. So I, I think they're, they're going in the right direction. I just think that, you know, when we say things like, oh, these guys, I agree with you, Jimmy, like we all want them to be better. I'm part of this crop now, I guess. Well, you're, we all want to be you're better. You're part of this generation now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're we all want to be. We all want to be better. You know, we all want right. to be better. But, but you also have to look at things like from a judging perspective. They're looking at just from what I see. It's not just coming in the most ripped guy. You've got to have some fullness in combination with that. You may be the most ripped guy. If you don't have the shape to go along with that. You can kiss a goodbye. You're never. You're, I mean, that's what. I mean, that's what Nick Walker is, is currently facing. Like, let's. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Nick but, Walker's challenge but, today. But, that, but you know? that's also that's also off season stuff too. There's no there's no way that you know anybody should think and say, well, you know what, I want to come fuller, so I'm going to be less lean. 
the, the your your fo main focus is fat free. Yeah, fat free. Agree. Keep the calories up. See, a lot of people. I know from myself and some other guys, right? We fed the machine. We fed the machine and we burned the calories. Okay. So I got ready for shows between seven and 10,000 calories. Right. So, so we fed the machine. We were building, but we were going fat free because I would do 45 minutes of cardio on an empty stomach. And I'd do 45 minutes of cardio at night before I went to bed on the stepper. Okay. Yeah. Two workouts. And I mean, between seven and 10,000 calories. So, out of those four, out of the seven days, the four days, I was deficit. My cat, my caloric, I was in caloric deficit. Three days, I was eating up. You see what I'm saying? So I, I played this thing. Now, nowadays, there it's less cardio, less food. And at some point, the body just shuts down. You have for the for a car to go fast, you need gas, right? I'm not saying something you guys don't know. When you press on the gas, you want the car to go, it's going to burn gas. You want this body to burn, you have to feed it. And you got to make it work. So, so when you become fat free, you become flat. The flat part comes from you're not eating enough. And that's where everybody is scared. And let me tell you something. The biggest, the biggest guys who, who are doing this are the coaches because they're afraid to take chances. So, Jason, Jason, I have a question for you, okay? Do you think that the competitors nowadays could possibly be better if they competed more? Where back in your generation, you had, you had Kevin and Sean and Milos doing three, four, five shows and then going to the Olympia, where now most people are doing one show, they win it, then they go into the Olympia, but you're professional. How are you getting to know your body better, your stage present, your posing, your gear, everything, if you're only doing it once or twice a year? So that makes sense. Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, the only way you learn your body is by going through the motions. You know, like uh, I don't know if anybody else played any other sports, you know, but I was a wrestler and a football player and you scrimmage. You, you play with other people. You get involved. You you know, um, my daughters are soccer athletes. They constantly have fucking games after games after games because that's where you learn, hey, I made a mistake. And it's not a matter of if you're going to make mistakes. So these guys that aren't competing enough, they're not knowing what to do when they hit that mistake. Uh, you know, I, I'm doing this for this show. I got another show two, three weeks later. This I did not respond well to. I'm going to do it differently until you learn your body. But, you know, Jimmy made a point also. You really never prepare for a show twice the same way. It's always slightly different, right? Yeah. So once you learn your body, you know, when you hit a hurdle or, or you hit a speed bump, you have to know how to manipulate, pivot, and assess and, and go into a positive direction. But these guys, you know, you see some of them, they're on stage and they're dripping with sweat because they're not conditioned. They haven't done this before. They didn't handle their dehydration stage properly or, or efficiently. Um, they don't know how to dry out. Um, they don't know how to carve up properly. Um, the only way to really learn how to do this is by competing. Um, plus, you know, you really, you, you get that mature look, that hard earned muscle, the more you do it and your body starts releasing of that little bit of subcutaneous and intracellular fat that gets, yeah. gets trapped there that your body holds on to sur to, for survival mode. The more you do this, the more, the more your body says, all right, you know what? I'm going to eat a few offers. You know, I could peak properly. I can let this go for a couple of days and we'll, we'll rebound afterwards accordingly. Um, but I agree the more, the more people do this, the better they will be. And I just think that people have taken this lax approach. Oh, I did one show. I'm, I'm burnt out. I need a year off. Like, holy shit, dude. Really? And I'm not knocking today's athletes by any means, but I think people, it's so watered down where they're rewarded by cheat meals and they're rewarded by, you know, our reward is, all right, dude, you can have an extra 50 grams of carbs today. Big fucking deal. You know, like, you know, so they have to, people have to learn how to suffer more um, and that will make them better athletes. And that's what I think is going to take, you know, Kennedy is, is the one guy, the one guy that says, fuck the norm. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to whore myself out on social media and get seen every week. I'm going to build a demand for myself and want people to come see me compete 
or see me in person. And it's going to be that person that holds all the cards. Yeah, hey, this, and just, this guy. I haven't seen him all year. You know, I want to see what this Jason, guy looks like Jason, under these cards. Jason, I agree with you, but but you know what the problem is? Um, and part of the reason why that was happening in that era versus now is magazine contracts. I mean, I mean, there were a lot of contracts back then that were tied to your competition prowess. You get bonuses and stuff like that. Listen, the truth is, and I agree with everything you said, it makes sense. Like from a competitive standpoint to get better, know your body, it makes sense. From a, when you, when these guys look at it, so I'm looking at it now, I'm, I'm trying to explain it more as a, a pro today, right? You're going to compete five, six, seven times a year. Okay. How much money it's going to take to go into those shows and do them, the expenditure, right? You don't have the contracts like back then to back you and, and, you know, do these shows. Even if you're a top guy, it's going to be out of pocket, right? Three, the health, the health portion of this, we like the less shows, let's, let's all admit the less shows you can do per year to preserve your health, the better. So that's that portion of it too. The fourth part is there's just no financial incentive. Like we said, like you just said, Jason, right? They can, and this is not exactly a, a, an advantage for, for your point. I think it's more of an advantage to what you were saying to your point. It's a support of your point. Why would I spend X amount of dollars to go compete during the year, compromise my health, spend all this money. There's no incentive for me. The prize money I'm going to make is the same prize money you guys made 10, 20 years ago when you can stay in relatively decent shape, preserve your health, focus on your other business avenues like social media, which is YouTube and all that stuff. And that's why those pros are doing it. It's not necessarily that they don't want to compete. It's just that there's no financial incentive to do it. They're not, they're, they're not getting anything out of it. If not, they're making a loss, especially if you're not a top guy that is actually going to earn by doing this, you're taking a well, loss. So that's I, just I, true. I, that's why. No, yeah. and I agree with that. I, I agree with you. But, but what, yeah. what Sean had asked me was, would they be better athletes? I agree. To your point, I agree. 100% yeah. to that point. So, yeah. but, but, to, but to your point, we weren't making money either. Yeah, we, we, were, we, we don't think we were making a lot of money, man. There was no, <laughs> the prize money was five grand. Yeah. And, and not for yeah. nothing, but there was a few people that had magazine contracts. Yeah. Just a few. And those were the top guys. Everybody else, did you might you might get your flight paid for going out there. That's it. So, so let me tell you, I was on hundreds of covers of magazines. Okay. I didn't have one magazine contract. I've been on five. I never got. I never got yeah. paid for a magazine. And, and let me tell you, there was a there was a gentleman, you know, well, Tom Dieters, and then Jeff Jeff Everson when he was running Muscle and Fitness. <clears throat> and there was a guy named Jim Chatter. Jim would call me. <clears throat> I'm in Miami. <clears throat> he would call me seven thirty in the morning. He goes, "Hey man, there's a twelve fifteen flight to LAX. You want to come and shoot?" I'm like, "You can't say no to this." Yeah. I'm on a flight to LAX. Okay. I do the shoot two, three, four hours, and I'm back going home the same day on the red eye. And back then there was Carnival Airlines. I'll never forget it. And I found a way to take out the middle seat so I can sleep. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and you know what they would do? They would give me 500 bucks. They would give me 500 bucks for my time. They justified it as, you know, whatever whatever i don't know how they justify it, but i would get 500 bucks towards the end i was getting paid for the covers but the thing is i took those covers and turned it into a business with guest appearances so nobody really made a lot of money you had you had you had the big boys okay and back yeah. then they were getting paid they were getting yeah. paid i mean even after our era I mean, Jay was getting six hundred thousand. Phil was getting six hundred thousand. Oh, They're all getting muscle tech muscle contracts, tech. man. The muscle yeah, tech muscle contracts, contracts. Yep. Contract. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, uh, I, I remember uh, what's his face was getting from at Metrics. It was getting uh, like four hundred thousand from Metrics. So the big boys were getting paid. But to to what you're saying, I totally agree with you. It was the only way in our industry we can make money is basically go guest pose, show up, show up at expos sell our eight by tens for ten dollars okay and take pictures with fans all day long yeah so that was the only way we really made money 
but and 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 with what you just said actually makes a lot of sense yeah and if you really think about it why would you kill yourself exactly. yeah. you see what i'm yeah. saying but but if you come on our side when we see this and we see this potential in the athlete right not in his yeah. personal life not in the money making none of that stuff right we're like fuck. what's wrong with this kid yeah yeah that so if, if I could, if I can add to that, there's been a progression, right, through the whole, through any sport. Look yeah. at college athletes now that are getting paid that never got paid before for, for playing football. Look at pros contracts now to back in the 60s and 70s when these guys had full time jobs all year and they played football in the, in the you know, in the fall and the winter, right? Yeah. Um, so what Jimmy and I used to have to do to earn a living, and some of these guys that were getting paid top dollar from sports supplement companies. That all died out, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm and I'm a supplement company owner. There was no return. Right. Companies were losing money by paying these athletes because you can't possibly sell enough product to get back what you're spending in marketing, the, the shows, expos, paying the athletes, promo material, clothes, this and that. It's just everything costs money, and and once that started drying, and then the the more supplement companies is hey you have muscle tech doing it and you have weeder doing it and you have you have this one doing it now there's 10 other companies all trying to to fish in the same pond right so yeah. athletes stopped getting paid and that died out so the only way for guys to generate income was hey you know dude i'm going to start a youtube or i'm going to go on social media and i'm not saying like what what is going on right now is wrong or bad it's been the progression yeah. and guys some of the top guys have found a way Hey, I don't have to guess pose, dude. I could put up a video and I'm getting so many yeah. clicks and YouTube's fucking paying. Dude, I, I'm not knocking that. Right. More power to them. Dude, if you don't have to leave your fucking house and you're making money, dude, God bless you. Like Absolutely. that wasn't available for us. So what we did kind of set the pace for what's going on now. And dude, in 10 years, you guys will be bitching about the guys what they're oh, yeah. you know, what doing nowadays. Olympia, you, Olympia will be a million are. dollars at that yeah. point. If you, <laughs> back, <laughs> yeah. if you go back, you, you listen sound like to our it. parents. Oh, the music yeah. is such shit. Right? <laughs> when I was here, I had to do YouTube. You guys don't even have to do anything. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm right. cool. both ways, right? Yeah. But if you go back and you listen to Deion Sanders, I'm friends with Zach Thomas and Jason Taylor and all that, they mock the new guys. Yeah. The NFL it's players, oh man, they rag on them because they don't they don't want to practice. Right. Well, dude, in the NBA, they talk about these guys like LeBron right. who right. who misses games. He has as part of his contract, he only plays X amount of games a week. And Michael Jordan's like, "Fuck you, dude! What? I played with the flu. We didn't yeah. fucking miss. You know, we didn't miss games. We used to beat sport. the shit out of each other and not not flop all over the floor." So. <laughs> It's, it's just the progression of everything. Progression, right. you know, yeah. So, yeah. And now is no different from bodybuilding. And that's and, and again, that's where you know we sound like we're we're beating up on on you guys. We're not. You know, um, we just no, this is good. This is good conversation. You know, we like like, yeah. like if you came down down here and we trained together and all that, I still beat you up. You see, <laughs> I, I, I would still put you down as as, yeah. as much as I could. To make you a better athlete, you're like, dude, I'm making millions of dollars. I'll be, I don't give a shit. Let's train. Yeah. You see what yeah. I'm saying? It's the yeah. athlete side. It's the athletic side that we see in these in, in you guys that, you know, the potential. You know. So there's there's a saying, right? There's a saying that when somebody's hard on you, when somebody is really yeah. hard on you, they want the best for you, dude. We want we care. They yeah. want to succeed. Okay. When people are like, yeah, don't worry about it, dude. Next time, take it. Yeah. They don't give a shit, dude. Yeah, Everybody okay. wants you to do good, right? They just don't want you to do as good as them. But when 100%. people are really hard on you, dude, it's because they want they want the best. They want to see the best version of you that's possible. 100%. No, Jimmy, I, I may actually take you up on that during my New York. I may come down for a couple of days. Hell Florida yeah. Just right there. Was, I was just going to ask, what part of Florida are you in, Jimmy? I'm in Orlando. Okay, you're all right. right. I train, oh, I train at this amazing, amazing gym. It's, it's called Kiss Me Muscle. It's all old school pieces. It's 8,000 square feet, really old school. Flex yeah, leverage. Yeah. I mean, like 45 pieces for legs. I mean, everybody comes out. Vince Taylor's with me at the same gym. Oh, Vince nice. Taylor, Will, yes. Willie Stallings, Fakri. Fakri's, we're all in there together. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to take you up on that. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> You're on mute, oh, Sean. Sean, you're mute. 
Who's Are you on trading Vince? with Vince and his special little hand ball things? <laughs> well, Vince, Vince, let me tell you something. Vince, I, I was like, come on, Vince, let's train. He goes, no, man, I ain't training. You know, and then he comes in with shorts on. His freaking calves are shredded. I was gonna say he looks. You know, he still looks he's got jacked. he's got these little balls all over the gym. Everywhere I turn, they're hanging from somewhere. You know, so the other day I wanted to do triceps. Oh, biggest mistake I made in my life. So I grab I grab the ball and I grab it underneath like the rope. You know, how we do it's just the one hand, right? He comes over and goes, "Dude, you're doing it wrong." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Grab the ball." I'm like, "Okay, sorry, coach." You know, it's like, <laughs> but he's there and you, and he's still, he's still alive and kicking and man, he's funny as hell. And, um, you know, Willie Stallings is there now too. We're, we have him here. We see him every day. He's 60 years old. I don't know if you guys know Willie Stallings. I competed but, with Willie, dude. We, uh, yeah. we battled that for the junior nationals and yeah, we did the nationals Will, together and competed as yep, a pro for first couple yep. years. Yeah. Really? I saw him compete at the Southern States in 92 in Florida. Man. Let me tell you something. Um, so when I made the decision to, to do the, to do Tokyo, he calls me and goes, bro, why are you leaving me behind? <laughs> I said, I said, come on. And he's 60. He's, he's 60 now. I said, I said, come on, man, let's do this. He goes, Oh man, don't tell me this. Don't tell me this. <laughs> you know? So I don't know if you guys have seen it lately. Have you seen, uh, Tony Freeman's post lately? Yeah, yeah, he's he's okay. uh yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, he's been posting all his old pictures. Okay, yeah. so when I made the announcement, he, he comments underneath. He goes, "Road trip." So I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, come on, baby, let's go." He goes, uh, "I'm really thinking about it." So I got oh, to go. Man. I got <laughs> Tony Freeman making a comeback. That could, could be dangerous. Could man. you imagine? That, dangerous. that could would be dangerous. Imagine? Yeah, I'd love to see it. Yeah, man. Me he, too. He lost. A, he he. I know he like. Uh, he did like a cleanse thing for yeah. a while, and like, yeah, like he lost he, a lot he, of size. Is he, is he training he, again? Like, like he's, he's back in training. Last time I okay. saw him, I thought he was sick. Yeah, he lost a lot. Well, I said, of Tony, what happened to you? He goes, oh man, yeah. no, I feel great. I'm like, you look like shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, but, because, um, of the par- because of the parasites, he was eating raw tuna back in the day, yeah, and all the yeah. parasites tore him apart. Yeah, but um. But he's back. He's he's back in training, and and uh, every day, if you go to his IG, he's posting something from his old his old pics, and they're all amazing yeah. pics, right? Because you know, he looks phenomenal. Um, and I'm like, come on, buddy, let's go road trip. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> you know, but uh, awesome. it's fun. It's fun. And I hope you guys have that camaraderie, you know, because we do. Look, oh, Jason, yeah. I haven't talked to Jason in in, in yeah. two three years, and and it's like there's a brotherhood, no matter what. On the, in the eras, right? No matter what, there's always some kind of connection that we, and bond that you will always have with those guys that you compete with. Oh yeah, you know, hundred percent. It's 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 such a it's such a small it's it's such a small league still at the end of the day, realistically, Very. right? Like like even me, like a lot of the guys I competed in in nationals and you know, and going into North Americans, a lot of people are have turned pro from from that class, and we're all competing in the in the you know coming up and coming pros right now. Like Mike right. just turned pro, you know. So it's like, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing, and we're all we're all pretty much. I think the camaraderie is is definitely there. I think as pros, especially with when not everyone is concentrated in the same places anymore, like it used right. to be like Cali and New York, but social media still helps bring that together. I mean, right. something like this, right. We all, we all right. do that constantly. So it's, it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. Yeah. The, 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 the funny part was that we were all friends, but once we were down to the second, you know, two weeks out, man, we didn't talk to nobody. <laughs> no right. talk to no one. Especially, talk especially to no when, one. when the, either, a pre, either a press conference or, or, or weigh-ins or whatever, man, we were enemies. We were like... <laughs> <laughs> and then until after the show... Until after pre-judging the show, was over, right? Yeah. yeah. Once pre-judging is over, everyone's good. Yeah. yeah after yeah. the show, we're eating burgers and fries and, and fighting who's going to pay for it. You <laughs> yeah, know? Right, right, right. <laughs> the winner's got to pay, man. The winner's got to pay. <laughs> so, yeah, man. You guys got to keep it, keep it going, you know? Yeah, so, sure. so Jimmy, give us give us your pick start. It went all over. We did, we kind of just threw the whole Olympia prediction at the wall. <laughs> I got the I got the Fouad Abiyad spreadsheet going on. Give me the one through six here so I can record record it. Uh I'm gonna go with Hadi, Derek, uh Samson, Andrew, 
Um, oof. See, that's what I was telling you. After that, who do you who do you put? Well, you got, uh, you got Nick, put, you got I'm, Martin, Nick, you got William Bonac. Yeah, then you got Raphael, you know. Um, I'm going to put Nick. Nick I'm going to put Nick because Nick, he's he's a bastard. Like, he'll make it happen no matter what, you know. Yeah. Um, and he's from Jersey. Um <laughs> I, I like Raphael somewhere in there, you know, I think he's very excited about this whole opportunity, right? He's put on some size or, he's, or he filled out. He's eating a lot more from what I heard. Um, Martin's Martin. I don't I, I, I got to tell you, I think Martin's going to get lost on stage. I think Martin is going to be the Regan Grimes when Regan Grimes showed up at the Olympia the first time. And we were like, <laughs> I'm looking for Regan. We couldn't find them. Right. Yeah. You know, a lot of big um, guys in the Olympia. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think it's, it's the, the, and the only reason why Hadi and Derek are going to stand out is because number one, we're looking for them. Number two, they're just mass monsters. Everybody else is tall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. else is a little 5'10, 5 5'11, 5 you know, they're all up there. So that's where. I don't yeah, know. It's funny. It's funny you say that when everyone always says, oh, Hadi and Derek are smaller. When you looked at the Arnold footage of Hadi versus Samson, Hadi wasn't being outsized at all. He's just shorter. He wasn't yeah. a yeah. smaller man. He was just a yeah. shorter man. That was it, you know? So yeah. they're mass monsters, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So Jeez, that's, no, where, to... that's where I'm going to stop. So I don't I don't, I don't, don't even know what to do after that. All right. So, Jimmy, you have Hadi, Derek, Samson, Andrew, Nick, and Rafa. Yeah. Okay. Jason, I have you with the, trying to follow you. Derek, Samson, Hadi, Andrew, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'd go, I'd go Nick next. Okay. Nick for fifth. And then, uh, I mean, I, I, you could throw Brandon in there. You could throw um, – shit. I, th I think I, I agree with Jimmy that Martin's going to be pushed down. Like, you know, seeing, seeing Martin compare with Nick at the New York Pro is going to be different than seeing Martin compared with everybody else at the Olympia. So I would bump him down a few spots. Um, Brando, uh, Brando uh, Raphael. Uh, Top six is fine. We don't want to. Uh, no, you can't. It's getting tougher and tougher yeah, as you go deeper. Yeah, I mean, you could juggle. And I, and I, to be honest, dude, I'd love to see Hunter up there. I just don't think yeah. we're going. Yeah. I just don't think we're going. Yeah, I know Kenny and I've talked about. It. I think Hunter's midsection is getting blown out as he gets bigger and bigger. So, can I? Can I go off, off topic here? Why doesn't why doesn't Lee train Hunter? So to my knowledge, to, to my Jason. knowledge is uh, they don't talk shop. Yes, correct. He doesn't want his dad. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't know if it's a size thing too. Being his dad, six inches shorter and you know, hundred pounds lighter. Uh -huh. I don't know. Just I mean, just I, I know, I know. Even if my dad was a great bodybuilder, I wouldn't want him coaching me. Sometimes you don't want to hear it, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear it. I don't know. Yeah. All right. But look, Kennedy, you know, Lee, Lee might not know how to do what these guys are doing nowadays. And, you know, we just talked about it like what Kennedy said. But why, but why do you have to do what the guys are doing today? Why don't you just do what you were doing back then? Well, Lee might not, might, might not know how to approach that to a guy who's 260 pounds, you know, right. plus, <laughs> plus I, I can honestly say Lee Labrada probably got by on, on minimal gear. Yeah. That, I was just going to say that. Like, so what, what's it going to tell him? Take a hundred deck and 200 Primo and call me in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a different time for that. And right, yeah. you know, we've kept up with it because we, yeah. we have guys and no guys that are currently competing, but I don't know if Lee has, you know, uh, but you know, um, he probably most likely just doesn't want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Kennedy, I know you. I know we talked offline. You got Hottie first. I'm assuming Derek second. Yes. So I have Hottie in first place, uh, just like Jimmy. I think that if he comes in with that Arnold look, uh, Arnold 2024. You can post all the back shots. I, I think Hadi, that's a very complete look. It's that that was the best bodybuilder in the world. 
for 2024. So I think he wins. Derek second. Uh, and then I have, we talked about it already, Andrew third. Yep. Uh, Samson fourth. I'm going to go on a whim here. Nick fifth. Okay. And then sixth is going to be, I don't know who it's going to go to, but I think it's going to be between Brandon Curry. He is a former Mr. Olympia. They're not just going to throw him to the, to the bushes. Um, you got to give him his respect. I know he's a little bit smaller from his previous places before, but he's an old Mr. Olympia. They're, they're still going to honor that title. You know, let's, let's be real. So I think it's going to be between Brandon and uh, Martin, but I think they'll give it to Brandon. So I have Brandon in sixth. Okay. Mike, go ahead, buddy. I know you got, you got hottie first also. I think my list is pretty much the same. I'm I'm going hottie because I'm a what have you done for me lately guy. And hottie said it himself. If if that hottie went up against last year's Derek, and we haven't seen this year's Derek, but that hottie, you know, mops everybody. So I have hottie first. I'll go Derek second. I'll go Andrew third. I'll go Nick fourth, Samson fifth. And I'm gonna be different, and I truly think Martin will be in sixth. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I like it. So I've got kind of similar to everybody else. I have Hadi, Derek, Samson, Andrew, Nick, and I'm going Raphael in sixth. Yeah. Let's just huh. be wrong. Let's just all be, all be wrong. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Hey, guys, who who who's who are we not talking about? Or who's going to do the most? Who's going to surprise everybody? Whether it's Martin or who's who's going to surprise us that maybe <clears throat> top ten. I, I like to say it's Martin, but I don't even know if you can call him a dark horse, right? Um, if he can make it over here, I think Beirut's. That's I what was I, was, gonna I was just going to say. That. I was just going to say it's Beirut's. If, if he if he shows up, people are in yeah. trouble. That Where, do you put him? Where do you put if him? He, he could be a top four guy. Yeah. He, can go, he can go from 10 to, yeah, four. You know, yeah. It, yeah. who knows? I, I have him lowest. I have Beirut's lowest fifth. In my yeah, opinion. Fifth, sixth, wow. but I'd see fifth, him like yeah. like Jason, like fourth, third, fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Kennedy, one of your favorites, Akeem. We haven't talked about Akeem. He's looking good, but not a lot of people are talking about him either. Yeah, yeah, Akeem. I mean, he's also co coached by Aceto. I think Akeem looks great. Uh, it's just these, and that's why we were talking about the competitive, like the competitive top ten. They're not really missing anything, man. These guys, they're all complete. You know, it's just we're talking apples and oranges at this point. And Akeem from the side, from the side shots, Mom's he's probably he's probably the fir first or second best bodybuilder in the world from the side. Side chest, side tricep, no one's touching that guy. You know, it's just when you're talking about the Olympia level, you know, you start comparing other shots. Where does he place lower in other shots versus this? And when you totally tally it up, uh, he just doesn't make it into that top six, at least for, for my right. predictions. Jason, do you ever run into Akeem in any of the gyms you train at? Uh, no, I, I train. I train by me, and I train early in the morning. I'm at a powerhouse. Um, All right. He's I guess suppose. Yeah, I guess suppose with him. At, I guess suppose with him in New Jersey states. He's looking great. He looks great. Yeah, dude, he he does look great. Um, yeah. He uh, he he can make a run for a top six spot without a doubt. But Akeem, he's, he's you know, in his last show, he proved everybody wrong. He was in great shape. If he continues that with that trend, dude, he could he could he could crack into that top six. And I, I asked him because his look from prejudging to finals is like two completely different bodybuilders. And I asked him, I was like, what did you guys do between prejudging and finals? He said nothing. <laughs> they literally did nothing. So if he comes with that finals look that he's brought to the Arnold in uh prejudging and he can maintain that, yeah, Akeem could be dangerous for sure. Dangerous right. in that top 10 for sure. Yeah. Guys, any, any other topics that we've been all over here? Anything else while we wind down? Uh, guys, I had a blast. Yeah, guys, thank great. you. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy and Jason, I got to connect with you guys after yeah. this. Uh, you guys, yeah, just, you look, you look, Kenny, you look fucking good, dude. I just saw your pictures, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. Jimmy, you know? Jimmy and Kennedy, it was great meeting both of you. Right, for, sure, know, for sure, Kennedy, I follow you on. I followed you for a while, so nice talking sure, to you, man. Mike, I'll yeah, catch you tomorrow. You still got to send me your uh, what you need. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hit me no, up this, on IG and I'll, send, awesome. and, I'll, and I'll send you my, my cell phone, guys. And, you know, guys, anytime you guys want to come down. I was, you know, was going to say, I'll be in Florida next month, actually. I'll be down in Tampa at MI40 for, for yeah, like five days. So that's hour, not a fun drive. It's yeah. an hour away. Yep. You know, so that's a great gym, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Jimmy. I, I'm going to, you know, for me, I, I got to come down for a couple of days. I, I will live in the back of the gym, whatever you need, <laughs> you know, and we'll, we'll slug it for a bit. So no, man, I think on, I, man. I'd like to do that during prep, you know, when Listen, we talked about it, that, got, that prep, I got, you're that I got deep plenty space. Of rooms. I got yeah. plenty of rooms. I got plenty of food. I got a gym. What else do you need? <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> so guys, it's, it's truly been a pleasure. For those of you watching, comment below. Who do you agree most with? And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow all these great people. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Sean, thank you for uh, putting this together, man. Yeah, thank yeah thanks you. for having me.